What's up? My name is Nick Spinelli, and today I'm gonna help you not shit the bed with your wedding speech. The first thing I want to let you know is the answer to most wedding speech questions are it depends because there's no real absolutes. It depends on the situation. So before we get into the nuts and bolts of the actual speech, a couple things I want to go over. Number one is to really know your audience and know yourself. How you write your speech and what you're going to do really depends on what you're in for when you get up there. When I was researching and going online and seeing what kind of videos were out there for this sort of thing, there's a lot of really proper people up there going, well, of course do not drink before your speech. Of course do not curse during your speech. This goes without saying. Blah, 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 you have to be professional. That's all bullshit, I'll be honest with you. It really depends on you and it depends on your audience. If you're a drinker, if you like to have a good time, you drink on the weekends, then maybe it's a good idea to have two or three before your speech. It'll loosen you up, you'll feel good, and you'll be more likely to kill it. On the flip side, if you're not a drinker, if you rarely drink at all, then it's a terrible idea to have a drink before your speech because you're gonna feel off and you're not gonna feel comfortable. It's all about being as comfortable as possible. When it comes to cursing, that depends on your audience and kind of how you are in real life. If you're the type of person that doesn't curse, then of course don't curse during your speech. If you curse in real life and you can make it funny or just make it flow right, then sure, I don't think it's a big deal to curse unless there's a bunch of little kids or a bunch of like church goers or nuns or priests or anybody that you know for a fact would get super offended and like never talk to you again. Otherwise, we're all adults here. Why not throw a little bit in there? Just don't curse just for the sake of cursing, like a 12 year old playing Fortnite or Call of Duty or whatever, like fuck, shit, fuck, 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 fuck. When it comes to politics and religion and other like sensitive topics, I mean, I really wanna go down that road, but I'm not gonna say to never do that. There is a situation here and there where it would work if you have the right crowd, the right couple, if all the stars align and you really think something would be appropriate or would be funny or whatever, yes. So there's no like absolute no, no matter what, but for the most part, I'd stay away from that stuff because, you know, people get... So before we talk about the details of the different kinds of speeches, let's talk about how you should start your speech no matter what you plan on doing. The number one thing I always see people do when they start their speeches that's just a little redundant is they always introduce themselves after they've already been introduced. If you watch a lot of videos that are out there, they're always going to say, well, start off with introducing yourself. And for those of you that don't know me, first of all, everyone says, for those of you that don't know me, everyone. So it's just, you just match everyone else. It's just a redundant thing. And I really wouldn't introduce yourself at all unless you weren't introduced. Nine times out of 10, the DJ or the band or whoever's emceeing is gonna introduce you as the best man or maid of honor or matron of honor. So that's already covered. So just jump right into it. There's a million ways to start your speech without doing that. You could just say, hey everyone. You could start your speech with saying, let's give a round of applause to somebody. Some people say, hey, real quick, can we give a round of applause for the parents here? They literally put together this amazing night. That's a good way to start. If you want to be funny, you could say, give a round of applause to the bartenders. They've been running around for me all day. I've really been keeping them busy. Ha ha ha, that sort of thing. That's a good way to start, kind of break the ice, and then you just jump right into it. Don't reintroduce yourself after you've already been introduced. So generally speaking, there's two different types of speeches you can make. You can make it short and sweet, or you can do the storyteller. Now the short and sweet approach is perfect if you're kind of not a good public speaker, you don't wanna do it in the first place, but you're kinda of obligated so you can get in, get out, and then on to the rest of your day, right? You're good to go. And I do wanna note that don't worry about being short and sweet. It doesn't mean you didn't do a good job because honestly, short and sweet is 10 times better than someone that rambles on and on and on and on and like grandma's passing out in her soup and shit. Like you don't wanna do that. It's way better to be short and sweet than long and boring. Now short and sweet is typically under a minute long and you could say a variety of different things but usually you wanna congratulate the married couple, let them know how happy you are for them, maybe make a little joke about the open bar or you know, can't wait to get this party started. 
Um, and don't be afraid to say, like, listen, honestly, I'm not a big public speaker. I'm just happy to be here. I'm honored to be the best man or maid of honor. I've loved so-and-so, been best friends with so-and-so for so, so long. I'm so happy to see them so happy. I congratulate them, all the families. Thank you for coming out, and I'll see you guys on the dance floor later. Something like that. Just something short, sweet, meaningful, and really just from the heart. And you're good. Under a minute, out. Now with the short and sweet, if you can go without writing anything down and kind of just go off the top of your head, that's really gonna be the best. Even if you mess up, you stumble over some words or you forget something, a lot of times that comes off 10 times more genuine than actually writing everything down and reading word for word. If you're gonna write stuff down, it actually goes for both too definitely at least do bullet points. So that way you know what to talk about, when to talk about it, and then you just go off the top of your head so it sounds more genuine. But especially with the short and sweet, try and do it off the top of your head, knock it out, and go sit down, your job's over. <laughs> Now when it comes to the storyteller speech, obviously you're gonna tell some stories. Lots of different ways you can kind of jump into it. I think a great way is to actually tell the story of how you met the bride or groom. And make sure you leave it all out there. If you hated them at first, say it. Be like, hey, when I first met him, I thought he was an asshole. And then blah, 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 we got to hanging out and we ended up being best friends. Tell the full story. If you're a family member and you've known them since they were born, talk about the day they were born. It was a snowstorm that day. It was crazy. Mom was freaking out. Whatever it is, talk about how you met. It's a great way to start because it gives the entire audience context of how you know them. So it kind of sets you up for what you're about to say. So you're pretty set for the beginning. So now you have to fill in the middle part. And of course, this is where you're gonna tell a funny story. When it comes to a funny story, you wanna narrow it down to your best one, right? One good, solid, funny story. And the best way to prepare is to literally write that story out. Like type it out word for word how you would explain it. When you're all done, reread it. Read it back to yourself. Are you boring yourself? Is there a lot of unnecessary information in there? You know, little, little, little tidbits that doesn't really matter. Look for that stuff and delete whatever you don't need. Try and get right to the point when it comes to the story and practice it. Practice telling the story where you can get right to the punchline, you don't lose the audience attention, and you get that good laugh at the end or you know whatever you're really looking for, crying, tears, anything. Like, like Make sure you just narrow it down. Because a lot of times when you tell a story, you might say some stuff that just doesn't really matter. You know, It's just extra fluff that's you know not needed. Now, if you're trying to roast them, I highly, highly recommend it. Some of the best speeches I've ever seen is when they really ripped apart the bride or groom, and it's been super funny in the past. Just a couple tips. Make sure that your jokes are funny. So try them out on friends. Maybe you have a couple friends that aren't gonna be at the wedding. Tell them the jokes. Let them know the context and then tell them the jokes and ask them if they're funny. You never know, just to make sure you know they're hitting the right way and that sort of thing. Also, if you need help with delivery, check out the Comedy Central Roast. They're all over YouTube, and you can actually see how their comedians rip apart whoever celebrity they're roasting at the time. And it can really help you know how to deliver the jokes properly and give you motivation on writing new jokes. Now, when it comes to the ending, it's always a good idea to end softly, especially if you're roasting them the entire time. It's like the cherry on top. When you end with something heartfelt, from the heart, you level them and say, you know what, honestly, I really love you guys to death. I'm so happy for you. I wish you nothing but happiness, da da da, and kind of like end seriously, you know, from the heart. It's like a perfect ending, especially when you literally just rip them apart with jokes. You know, it shows that you're still compassionate and it kind of, if there's anybody that was offended by your jokes or anything like that, it kind of brings them down like, all right, well, at least they, you know, said some nice stuff at the end, you know? It just helps it. It's a good way to end. You know, you just end on a nice note. Everyone says all, and then you get your claps and you leave. Which reminds me, don't drop the mic. Like, don't drop the mic ever, 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 ever. No mic drops. The DJ will hate you or the band will hate you. Microphones are expensive. It's just, it's just an asshole thing to do. Just don't drop the mic. No matter what you do, don't drop the mic. Don't do it. Don't do it. When it comes to the overall length of the speeches, no matter what kind of speech you're doing, you wanna keep it under five minutes. Always remember the shorter the better. I can't tell you how many speeches started out so good and then it ended up being so long-winded and took forever and then you just see guests just passing out just at their chairs.
All right, so you have your speech ready, you're ready to go, it's all written out. Now I'm gonna give you some tips on how to execute it. Always have your speech on you, ready to go for after introductions. At a wedding, typically, after introductions and first dance is when you're gonna be called up to do your speech. So make sure you don't leave it in your car, have it in your wallet or on your phone or in your brawl or wherever you wanna keep it. Just make sure you have your speech on you because you never know when you're gonna get called up. If you wanna know ahead of time, feel free to ask the DJ or the band. They'll be able to help you with the timeline. But for the most part, just be ready to go. You never know when you're gonna go up. It's always gonna be during formalities, like after first dance, maybe parent dancers there, whatever. It's gonna be during that time. So just be ready to go at all times in that little window. Once you get called up and it's your time to make the speech, don't forget your glass. At the end of the speech, you're gonna be making a toast. So you definitely wanna have something to toast with, whether it's a champagne glass or if there's no champagne, grab your drink, whatever it is, a water, just make sure you have something to toast for the end or else you're gonna kinda look dumb. So it's time, you got called up, your speech is ready, you have your glass in hand, you're going up to the sweetheart table or wherever you gotta go and it's time to make the speech. Let's talk about how to use a microphone. Now to properly hold a microphone, you wanna hold it in the middle, kinda with your fingertips so you have it tight or you can do a grip like this, but at least as long as you have it tight so it's not loosey goosey and you wanna hold it as close to your mouth as possible without actually touching your lips, cause that would be gross. This allows you to have a perfect, loud, clear voice over the PA system. You'll get everyone's attention. You'll have the entire audience's attention, which is super important. There's nothing more embarrassing than when people are like talking during your speech, right? And you're gonna just sound loud and clear. If you hold it far away from your mouth or you hold it down here by your belly button, no one's gonna hear you. People are gonna chirp you and call out, hey, we can't hear you. And whoever's controlling the microphone, it's gonna have to turn the volume all the way up to try and make it as loud as possible so the guests can actually hear it. What that does is it makes the microphone hot. When a microphone is hot, it's more susceptible to feedback and a bunch of other things which would just be more distraction for your actual speech and just mess you up at the end of the day. So to solve all those problems and to prevent anything from going wrong and for you to have the most perfect, perfect, perfect speech and everyone's attention, just hold it right here. Just consciously make sure you hold it right here. Trust me, you'll sound fantastic. So as a bonus, let's talk about some commonly used jokes. Now, I'm not saying don't use these jokes. It just really depends. If there's people that are gonna be at the wedding that go to a lot of weddings, chances are they've probably heard them before and maybe you wanna be a little more original, but that's up to you. The number one most commonly used joke that I hear every other wedding, if not every wedding, is when you have the bride have her hand there and the groom puts his hand over top the bride like this, so you tell them to do this, right? And then afterwards you say, well, ladies and gentlemen, this is the last time the groom is gonna have the upper hand. <laughs> it's something that's all over Google and that's the reason why most people use it in their speeches. So just so you know, if you Googled it, you thought it was funny, everyone uses it. Another real common one is the old joke about the length of the speech. So a lot of people say, so I read online that uh, my speech is only supposed to be as long as it takes the groom to make love. And then, all right, I'm all done here, and then you leave, <laughs> aha, you know, he's a minute man or 30 second man or whatever. Funny, cute, but definitely overused. So definitely consider that when you're picking out your jokes or what you wanna say. Just always be original and always be true to yourself too. If that joke is not something you would say on the normal, then I recommend not saying it. Maybe say something that fits more in with your personality. So thank you for watching this video. I hope this helps. If you have any questions or anything, feel free to reach out. I'm gonna leave all my information and my social media stuff in the description. Reach out anytime, I'm happy to help and good luck on your big speech.